Welcome to the CWPA Online Referee Education, the March Release 2019. Topic, Penalty Files, Part 2. The last time we did a video, it was on Part 1 of the Penalty Files. Uh, in Part 2, we're going to review Rule 8, Section 2, within 5 meter area to prevent goal. The key focus for a defending player to commit any foul within the 5 meter area but for which a goal probably would have resulted. That was what we covered in part 1. Now we're going to continue on in part 2. There is item A through G where the penalty foul applies. A for a goalkeeper or other defending player to pull down or otherwise displace the goal. Now, Section 5, and did you know this? Section 5 states, shall be excluded for the remainder of the game with substitute after the earliest occurrence of an event described in Rule 7-3. Sometimes this is forgotten. So not only is it a penalty foul, but that defending player or goalkeeper is excluded for the remainder of the game. Item B, for a defending player to attempt to block a shot or pass with two hands inside the five meter line. The defender player does not have to touch the ball, nor does the shot have to be taken, nor does the shot have to be a probable goal. Item C, for a defending player to play the ball with two hands. Item D, for a defending player to play the ball with a clenched fist. Item E, for a goalkeeper or other defending player to take the ball under the water when tackled. Item F, for the goalkeeper to push off the wall in an attempt to block a shot. If the ball goes into the goal, the goal is scored. If the shot is blocked, a penalty throw shall be awarded. Now this would also include if the ball goes over the top of the cage or if the ball rebounds off the crossbar. If that goalkeeper pushes off the wall in an attempt to block a shot, a new penalty throw shall be awarded. For a defending player other than the goalkeeper to jump off the bottom within the five meter area to prevent a probable goal. That's item number G. Now rule eight, section four. Excluded player interfering with play. For an excluded player intentionally to interfere with play, interfering or including affecting the alignment of the goal. And it also says in Rule 7, Section 21, if the excluded player does not commence leaving the field of play almost immediately, the referee may deem this to be intentional interference under the rule. And I have one video in this collection uh, that is a good example of that. Okay, you're looking at uh, clip number 10. This is in a shallow end of the water polo field of play. And what call would you make? As we look at this in slow motion, you can see there are two defenders using the bottom of the pool, and one affects the trajectory of the ball. The shot is good in terms of timing. It's before the buzzer went off. It left the hands of the player throwing the ball, but it'll never reach the goal because the player jumped off the bottom and basically affected the trajectory by blocking it right here. Therefore, this would be a penalty foul according to the rules as written. 
All right, clip number 11. Uh, the goalie comes out in a shallow pool and it's inside five meters. And we'll uh, get this up to full screen and take a look. And the referee awards a penalty foul. Uh, clearly the goalie fouled the, the player with the ball after she let go of the ball. It was a pretty hard foul. And this would typically happen in a shallow pool because uh, the goalie can use the bottom and can legally come out. And when she fouls that player it's a probable goal because she left the cage therefore a penalty throw should be awarded clip number 12 penalty foul basically for not leaving the field of play immediately and interfering with play it's pretty much self-explanatory Number 11 was excluded and stays in the field of play. Referee stops play and awards a penalty throw. Now as we run this through, you can see number 11 coming from behind. Hand is on the ball. But as soon as he lets go of the ball, he's on top, therefore excluded. In this situation, as a referee, you want to make sure that your signals are clear as to which defender was excluded. If it's unclear, it's a problem. So make sure you show the number, show the exclusion, Show the number a second time, just to make sure. Number 10 and number 11 actually look at each other, but neither one of them decided to leave, and number 11 is the one that was called on the foul and should exit the pool. And because he doesn't, it's a penalty throw. Okay, number 13, this should be a penalty foul for the ball being taken underwater while being attacked. As we bring this back, pass comes in, the shot's taken, the goalie blocks it, but gets two hands on it and brings it underwater. And then the field player forces the ball underwater. Therefore, it's a penalty foul and a penalty throw should be awarded. One more time. <laughs> Clip number 14. Give you some reference point. The ball is here at P5. The offensive player right at P3 basically will drive through. She has an advantage and will get the ball in this area over here, basically outside the goal post. You make the call, penalty or exclusion.
Obviously, in this situation, the referee made the call an exclusion foul. There's a good argument that this should be a penalty foul. Number one, probable goal. She had control. She was fouled inside the five. Had the opportunity to score, but the defender was hindering that effort. There's nothing in the rule that says she has to be inside the two goal posts. She can be outside coming in at an angle. And as I look at this as an evaluator, it tells me she had control, she had the opportunity, and was fouled by the defender in such a way she couldn't pick the ball up and have the attempt opportunity. Therefore, I would say this is a penalty foul. Clip number 15, exclusion foul or a penalty foul. You make the call. We may see something else in there. You might want to call as well. Obviously, it's a counterattack. Open player, two trailing defenders. Heading towards the goal. Take a look. Now, as you can see from the clip, the referee only excluded the player. Obviously, there was a foul. It was inside five meters. And to me, as I look at this as an evaluator, there's no question this would be a probable goal. If you take this player off her back where she's sinking and kind of holding with her elbows as well, it's a situation where if she were able to pick the ball up and wasn't being fouled, she could score on the goalie. So I would call this a penalty foul. However, the element of simulation is in there. You can tell and you can see by the way she's stroking and she kind of slows down a little bit. Whether or not this could be called or whether it should be called um, is a good question, but definitely a penalty foul. And I think the referee that made this decision in this particular situation, it was before we started to emphasize the responsibility of the defender to show that they weren't fouling and also call the rules as they're written. And I think this official, if they had the situation over again, would definitely call a penalty foul. The last clip, number 16. Again, this is you make the call. Watch it. Should it be an exclusion foul? Should it be a penalty foul? And here's your situation. Keep your eye on this offensive player right where the arrow is. On the far side of the pool is where the ball is going to come in. These players here will move forward and kind of clear out and now she will be maybe a little bit outside the five meter line with good opportunity to receive the ball. Okay takes a little bit of patience here by the official. She's basically outside, or at least it appears to be, outside the five meter line. Right there. Or close to being right on. So when she receives the ball, she might be a little bit outside, but she has control of the ball. You give her the opportunity to get inside the five. Now you have all the makings of a penalty foul. She's being fouled right here by just impeding, but she's inside. Uh, she's being sunk. 
and she doesn't have her hand on the ball. And I don't consider these two defenders as being a factor because if you took this player that was defending her out of the picture, she would have ample opportunity to pick that ball up and move over this way um, or continue to move forward and they would not be a significant factor. She'd be able to get a shot off and the opportunity for a scoring threat or a probable goal in my estimation. As an evaluator, I take a look at this. This to me is a penalty foul. No question about it. I would have a good discussion with that referee who called in this situation a, an exclusion foul. But it meets all the criteria of a penalty foul. And as we are calling the rules as written, uh, it fits all the criteria and should be a penalty foul. You can view these clips and see a description of each by going to Darfish TV under the Collegiate Water Polo Association channel. If you have any questions, please contact me. Comments are welcomed on content and subject. All views on each clip would be open for discussion if I was reviewing them with the referee involved. The purpose of the discussion would be to improve consistency and serve as an educational tool for improvement.